Uh, welcome to another episode of Dying to Listen. I have Ethan from Cellular Dies. Uh, honored to have you here, so I appreciate it. Uh, if you want to give um, a little bit of who you are, uh, your business name, and all that good happy stuff. I'm Ethan Williams. I run Cellular Dies. I've been doing it for about a year and a half now. And uh, currently based out of Jersey City. Um, and I mainly focus on cell dyes, as my name suggests. Um, and that's mainly what I've what I've focused on. Very good. I was going to say, how did you come up with your name? But I have a good idea. Yeah. Yeah. And I was lucky that no one else stole it before I did. So. Yeah, that is crazy. Uh, so I'm assuming you play disc golf, right? I love disc golf. Yes. How long have you <laughs> been playing disc golf? Uh, funny story. Um, Growing up, my dad actually played a lot of disc golf, and uh, he he would win local events. He was he was really quite good, um, and always tried to get me into it all growing up. But I never wanted to touch it. <laughs> um, up until when I fi- I got married about five and a half years ago, I picked it up just as something for the wife and I to do, and. Uh, and then it's been off and on since then. And really about a year and a half to two years ago is when I really picked it up and got hooked. So what, uh, well, that's awesome that <laughs> it's like your parents try to force you to do something, then you don't want to do it, but then you do it. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> do you have any, I guess, fond memories with your dad with this golfing? Hopefully there's some positives and not some negatives. Oh, oh yeah. No, no. Lots of, lots of positives. Um, <clears throat> I, I remember he used to bring me to, it, it was kind of like league, but for kids. Um, mm. And it was really cool every week to, to do that. Um, I was never very good. And I think that's partly why I didn't enjoy it was because I couldn't throw the disc 100 feet to save my life. Uh, and my dad was throwing him 400 plus, you know, and I was upset. But it's, it's cool now because uh, it's uh, a nice thing for us to connect on now i mean we play t- together all the time still and he still kicks my butt so it's great <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome that you guys still uh get to play i'm actually trying to uh get my father into disc golf uh he seems to be interested and it's just another way to uh get some father son time for sure what got you into disc dying that is a good question so i first I don't even know when I saw my first dies. I thought they were just printed, you know, or, or some sort of, you know, th- they were made that way. And uh, But once I took wind or heard wind of, of people actually dyeing them and making them themselves, um, I think the first dyer I came across that really blew my mind and made me want to try it was uh, Beefy Dyes. Okay. I don't know if you know Beefy Dyes, but um, uh, more glue bed style. Um, but his stuff was mind blowing to me. And so <clears throat> that's that's kind of my journey of, of seeing those being blown away, not really being able to afford buying one, but thinking I could maybe do one on my own and uh, with, with whatever discs I had. Do you remember the first disc you died and what that disc was and how you died it? I do. Um, it was a blue Firebird. Started off with a good color, dark blue. <laughs> Uh, and I just got some writ, of course, the liquid writ. Um, and I took conditioner, hair conditioner, put it down on a paper plate and sprinkled some writ on there, swirled it around and plopped it in. And I actually thought it turned out pretty cool. It was kind of like a little spacey vibe, very subtle. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, yeah, that was, that was my journey. That was the start. Nice. Do you still have that disc? I do not. Funny enough, uh, I got lucky shortly in, into my dying journey. So, like I mentioned before, I was too cheap to, to buy a dyed disc for my dyer. So, I had to, of course, do it myself. And so, I dyed all the discs in my bag. But once those were out, I didn't have money to buy more discs. Uh, but I kept posting my discs on Instagram. And someone reached out to me and said, Hey, are any of your discs for sale? And I was like, Yes, all of them. What do you want? <laughs> <laughs> and he bought all probably nine or ten discs off of oh, me wow. for probably 90 or 100 bucks, 10 bucks a piece or something, mm-hmm. which is probably the cost of the disc used as it is without the dying. But I was excited because then it had, gave me money to then buy some Pro Chem, 
buy some actual good discs, try some better methods, and and went from there. Otherwise, I might have just ended right then and there. That's crazy. Do you still know that guy? No, but funny enough, when I was I was in Idaho at the time, and he he was probably really close to where I am now. So I should try to find him just yeah, to see if I'm, he still has those discs. Yeah. I mean, yeah, you kind of owe it to him in a way that he kind of <laughs> kickstarted your this dying career. He really did. Seriously. A little uh, money and support from a, to a local uh, artist does make a huge difference. Yeah, it seriously does. Yeah, and that's honestly the only reason why I've gotten as far as I have is because people have supported me, reached out, bought and things. Like, without that, I, I would have been burnt out a long time ago. So I appreciate everyone that supports dyers. Do you remember your uh, second dye or, you know, your next experiment of dyes of what you've done? Yeah, so once I kind of went through the whole just, you know, really cheap practicing around with, with um, conditioner, I think I did shaving cream and writ. Um, once I actually made the investment into ProChem, uh, I, th I think I knew that cell dyes were something I wanted to get into initially. Mm -hmm. um, that's just what I was drawn to, uh, the other dyers were doing. And so it was, I, I remember the first dye I did that I, and everybody, every dyer I think has this, if you, if you do it long enough where you pull it out and you have that, oh my gosh, what did I just do? This is so cool. Yeah. Uh, a mind blowing experience. It's so fun. Um, and it was a Paige Pierce stalker, I think, but, uh, it was one of my first dyes with Floetrol and ProChem. Once I got the right ProChem, cause I accidentally mm -hmm. got the acid, acid uh... stuff anyways. But once I got the right ProChem, Got the flow trawl. It was a simple dye. It was a rainbow, um, rainbow style, just lines. Uh, it wasn't the big bubbly cell dyes. It was just a small cell. But uh, it's still to this day one of my favorite dyes I've ever done, and I can't recreate it. And that's you know, it's it's awesome. <laughs> one and done. Uh, what other type of dyeing methods have you done, and how did you, I guess, settle on the cell cell dyes? Other methods that I've done, uh, I have tried glue beds and with some success, mostly not. I'm, I'm not very good at glue beds, um, admittedly. Was, was that clear or white glue? I've tried both, yeah. Okay. Um, and let's see, what else have I done other than the shaving cream? The shaving cream, I'll, I'll admit I haven't given it a full effort with ProCam. I've only done the Ritz stuff, so I should try mm. that again. I haven't done any lotions. Um, mo mostly it's been minimal glue beds and all flow trawl. I was just flow trawl mm -hmm. all the way. And, uh, I have done some spins, spin dyeing, um, just with some Q-tips, acetone and, and, uh, pro cam. But I really got into cell dyeing. It's just, uh, I, th I think it's a type of art that really w jives with me. Um, and just my style, my personality um, I love the the nature of it, where you can't control it. You, but yet somehow it turns out beautiful. Something I couldn't create on my own. It just seems to come out. And the organic nature of these cells and the different types of cells you can create. Uh, you know, lots of people just stick with um, you know the big bubbly cells, but the small. You know, I love the um, I love doing small cells and, and the texture that it puts on discs. Uh, not physically, but just the way it mm -hmm. looks. Yeah, I love chameleon dyes. I started getting into that, um, and so it's it's just a it's an awesome road. Could you explain your uh, process that you do for cellular dyes? Is there I don't know if you have any trade secrets, but is there any tips or tricks that you could give anybody for that? And just kind of explaining your process in general. Yeah, of course. Um, I have no secrets, so if anybody reaches out, I'm happy to share. I have some tutorials on YouTube. But the, the biggest thing is just, uh, it's as simple as, as dye and flow trawl. I, I, in the past, I've tried to add glue or acetone or all these different things into it. Just keep it simple, dye acetone. Not dye acetone, excuse me, dye flow trawl. Um, so once you've got your dye and your flow trawl mixed up and you can look at the ratios, it's really easy to find. Um, 
then I just take a, a nine inch pie pan and then you s s put down your colors, um, usually in, in horizontal fashion. And then, um, and then on one end, you put a, a color that you're going to pull over top and then you, you torch it and you, you try to make bubbles out of that. Now that, that would create more small cell. If you want to create larger cells, you would add silicone oil to the rainbow colors and then those would bubble up. Or you can add silicone to the, the crossover color. There's just so many ways to do it, but, um, uh, but that's, that's basically my method is the saran wrap pull method. Um, I tried other methods and you know, they're great, they're, they're fun, but that seems to be the one I, I tend to do the most. Are there specific colors that you like to use in general and uh, any colors that you stick to when you add them together? My biggest thing has been my knowledge of the color wheel. Mm. That is one big tip I would recommend every dyer look into before you die is the color wheel. And what that even means, like what colors mix well together. Um, what contrasts with each other, what complements each other. So, you know, so many, so many people will, will take a, a green disc and they'll put red dye on it and what happens, you know, what happened? Why is it so brown? Well, yes. <laughs> I was going to say, sometimes you could use that to your advantage. If you have a blue disc, uh, <laughs> if you have a blue disc and you want a brown cookie, you just mix the right colors to get that. Ah, that's true. And I, I, you know, brown isn't necessarily the worst of colors. You know, obviously, as dyers, we try to stay away from brown to yeah. some extent. Um, brown discs tend to be hard to find. But um, but I definitely have used brown in, in different dyes, uh, usually not on purpose, though. Uh, <laughs> but, yeah, the color wheel. So <clears throat> I, I tend to... Um, I tend to try to, to layer colors so that colors are touching other colors that they're friendly with. So, um, and that just means that, you know, when I'm pulling the saran wrap across and these colors are gonna start mixing, I don't get any brown streaks or lines. Yellows are next to greens or yellows are next to oranges, that mm -hmm. kind of thing. Um, and then the other thing I would say is just, I like a lot of contrast or pop. And so maybe on one half I'll have, you know, certain colors and on the other half I'll have a completely on the opposite scale, you know, maybe I will have the reds on one side and the greens on the other or something like that. And it just helps the, the disc have more pop to it, I think. Do you have any favorite colors that you like to use in general? Um, right now I am loving the, I think it's a neon royal purple. Mm. That one is beautiful. Um... I love Caribbean blue. Caribbean blue is really nice. Um, but really, I mean, I use I use most of them. Um, I don't use meadow green very much. Um, I'm trying to think if there's any other special ones. Yeah, I, I use I use a lot of them most of the time. But yeah, I I, I tend to uh, use that neon royal purple a lot. I just love the way it turns out on discs. So do you exclusively use ProCam or do you use other, I guess, powder dye like I dye or do you even use uh, worm dip for any of your cell dyes? No, no worm dip, no I dye. It's all ProCam. ProCam only. Yeah. I, I need to get I dye uh, poly black. That is, yes. that is the one that I need because I, I mix Onyx with Dark Dungeon um, to try and get the, the black as I can. Sometimes it works out great. Other times it's more of a gray or a blue, but. Yeah, that's what I've heard. And unlike everybody else that seems to have started in disc dyeing, I started out with eye dye uh, and I had eye dye black and I, I still use it. Um, I think I do have Onyx, but I have been seeing in what people have been telling that it's not like a black black. It's kind of a, a grayish black or it's not as deep as it could be black. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I started out with a dungeon, a dark dungeon, and that's that can be more of a darker blue, um, and that's why I try to combat that with the onyx. So mixing the onyx with the dark dungeon, I think helps. But how do you store your dyes? Do you mix on demand when you're dying for your uh, colors, or do you have 
containers that you put them in that you use? So that's been a gradual process. I used to, when I first started, just mix on demand. And then I switched over to 12 ounce squeeze bottles that I, that I uh, will pre-mix and, and squeeze and use. And then I found still, I mean, I'm spending most of my time mixing dyes, mixing dyes and not dying. And so now I'm using half a gallon milk jugs full of wow. flow trawl and dye. And then I'll just <laughs> refill my, uh, my squeeze bottles uh, with that. And, uh, and now I'm spending less time mixing and more time dying, which is great. That's crazy. I mean, I guess if you're using it a lot, that makes total sense. But I guess for the stuff I do, I don't need that much time. <laughs> <laughs> well, you go through it quick if you're doing a lot of flow trawl, you know. So. And that's another question I have is, how much raw flow trawl do you put in like the base of the bed? How much flow trawl color do you add? And how do you u- reuse your beds? Great question. Um, I usually will use, um, I'll usually start off just by pouring a little bit into the pan itself. And I would say maybe, I don't know, a quarter of an inch. Um, I just eyeball it. And, um, and that's just so that I'm not using all of my dyed stuff if I don't have to. Um, and then I'll, depending on the dye, I mean, some, some dyes just require more color on top than others, especially when you're using silicone and stuff starts to bubbling up, you know, you don't want the, the plain flow trawl bubbling up. So mm-hmm. on those, you really want to add a lot of color. Other things, it doesn't matter as much as long as you don't see the, the plain flow trawl underneath, you're good. Are there any specific colors that you need more of that you've noticed? Mm, no, no, I think I think uh, all the colors they use about the same amount. Gotcha. Uh, do you reuse your beds more than once? I do, yes, and that is the beauty of cell dyes. Um, you know, you'll get you'll get some of your best discs out of your second, third, fourth pull uh, a lot of times. Um, and so, how I typically do that is I'll create a bed, I'll lay the disc down, I'll go through the process. I use heat, heat lamps, everything, pull the disc, and then I usually it's usually at night at that point, and I can't die anymore. So I I, I put saran wrap over top to keep all the moisture in come back Mm -hmm. the next day remove the saran wrap see what i've got to work with Mm -hmm. i can um you know pull saran wrap over top again to see what comes out i can add colors to it um i just start working with that bed and that again going along with what you asked earlier about what colors to use if you have done your work you know to keep happy colors next to each other uh you can reuse that bed over and over and over again. Um, if you're using, you know, red next to green, one and done might be it. But yeah, the, that's that's a huge money saver when it comes to, to flow trawl. Is flow trawl is not super cheap. At least here in the states, it's fifty dollars. Wow, fifty dollars a gallon. That would be expensive. Fifteen dollars <laughs> a gallon. Um, and so, you know, it, I, I go through so much of it that I want to re- reuse beds. And like I said, some, some of your best dyes come out of the second, third, fourth batch. And so just learning how to reuse beds is, is a huge tip. Again, I, I've never done flow trawl, um, but from what I've been hearing, people say to do a tester disc as your first one just to kind of get the bed, you know, good and golded and uh, as good as it can get. I do not do tester discs. Um, I actually, what, what I think a tester disc does is basically what I can do with saran wrap already. So uh, for me, I don't like to go through the entire process of laying a disc down, heating it, doing all the stuff as, as though it was going to be dyed. That that's just an extra step when I can just lay plastic wrap down, pull it up. Essentially what you're doing is you're just trying to blend the colors just enough that they're you know a gradient rather than harsh lines and you can do that with saran wrap and you you can do it in a second so that's what i do so you use heat uh what kind of heat do you use and how long do you heat it for and if you know the temperature what would it be that's a that's a two-part question because i use heat twice in my um in in the types of dyes um 
propane, first off, I use a torch. Maybe that's not mm -hmm. what you're referring to, but uh, essentially that's I use that a lot. I mean, technically it is heat, so that is a correct answer. <laughs> Maybe that's not what you're referring to. You, but um, yeah, I do torch my beds quite a, lot, quite a lot. And then I also use heat lamps, which you can kind of see behind me right here. Uh, but I think they're 250 watt bulbs. Um, and I don't, I'm not the scientific guy that's going to tell you exactly what temperature, um, I've, I've adjusted it. I've adjusted the height, higher, lower. I, I tend to do, um, a little bit less heat maybe than some, meaning that I will, I will turn the heat on for about an hour and a half and it's, it's far enough away from the bed that then I'll shut it off for half an hour, let it cool down, turn it on again for another hour, you know, hour or so, turn it off for half an hour and kind of rotate through that for four to six hours. And, um, and, and that's, that's how I like to do it. Some people get their, their heat lamps really close, do it in an hour and done. Um, I burned a lot of discs, unfortunately. So, uh, I have a much slower process and, and also I've, I've ruined a lot of cool stamps. Um, especially mm. Innova. Innova, they could they could work on their on their uh, stamp quality. No, not stamp quality, but stamp durability. We'll say. Yes. Uh, well, you you'll no longer be sponsored by Innova. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Don't worry. I, I had no I had no no need of Innova. I want Discraft ESP. I was gonna say, what is your favorite plastic to die? Uh, yeah, ESP. Discraft ESP. I love ESP. Um, and why is that? I love it because it takes a it takes dye so well, but B I love it that it's not just plain white discs. Uh, believe it or not, a lot of dyers love white. I think white is is fine, but um, with with ESP, you know, it's it's all these light subtle colors that um, come through in the dye in such cool unique ways. I think you get much richer, much more unique discs when you have um, the base color of the plastic being something other than white coming through. Um, and, and that's the beauty of ESP is that a lot of times you can push those colors way further than you should. I could take a pink ESP and turn it green. And I mean, not always, it depends on the saturation of, of, of the plastic and all, but it's just, it's just so fun to work with the different colors within that disc and um, and that way you're not getting the same colors, you know, you're using the same dyes, you're getting, you're putting the same colors on a disc every single time, but with ESP, they're going to react differently every single time. And it's usually for the better, I think. So what I've heard as well is, uh, the ESP plastic, even though it's not white, it still takes up whatever color was the dye, um, a lot better than others. What's your second or third type of plastic to dye? Um, other than ESP, anything that's that's uh, solid. First off, I, I don't I don't love transparent dyes uh, plastics. I have I have gotten some really awesome dyes on Champion plastic or, or mm -hmm. different clear plastics, but in general, I just I just want something that's premium. Something that's white and something, well, not even just white, just something that's premium and something that's solid colored. Um, that's really it at that point after ESP. What is a dye accessory that you could not live without? My torch. <clears throat> My butane torch. Yep. That is, I, I love, I love to torch my beds. <laughs> I don't know if it's the pyro in me, but it's, it's. <sighs> It's fun to watch them bubble and fun to watch them, you know, I think without my torch, my, my magic is lost. Have you noticed any detrimental effects with using a torch? Can you, can you use too much heat or torch on the flow troll and it messes up the flow troll at all? Yeah. I mean, if you get too much heat too close, um, you basically create kind of like a leathery surface um, on the top and that's, that's. I haven't noticed that, believe it or not, that leathery surface, I haven't noticed that it leaves like blank spots where it won't die. But it just means that you're, you know, for me at least, the cells that are trying to form and move stop. It just seizes everything. And so that's an issue. 
So is the torch to get rid of the bubbles or is it for something else? No, uh, bubbles bubbles are a good thing with, when it comes to cell dye. So I, I never try to get rid of any bubbles unless I'm doing chameleon. But And so I like a lot of bubbles in my flow trial, a lot of bubbles in my dye. And then the, the, the torch um, just creates movement and bubbles in, in the dye itself, like in the bed. You know, you, you may look at a bed and it's just, there's nothing there, but then you torch it and things start moving and things start changing. And uh, yeah, that's, that's, what, that's the beauty of the torch, especially if you have uh, silicone in it, you know, cause silicone will react with that torch a lot. But even if you don't have silicone, so many people are afraid to use the torch because they don't think anything will happen if you torch a bed that doesn't have any silicone in it. But those are some of my favorite dyes, is these really small cell dyes that don't have any silicone in it. I guess I never given that any thought because when you said torch, usually I use a torch to get air bubbles out of like, you know, uh, clear glue or lotion bed. And I guess I just realized that the uh, heat current within the flow trawl is what gets the dye mixing up so it starts moving around mm -hmm. yeah that is that is true and also what it does is uh, again i'm no scientist but um the it, it, uh, i guess there's different um with each with each dye you know there's different weights <laughs> again i'm not sure how there's different densities that's what i'm trying yes. to go for yep. each of the each of the dyes have different densities and when you just throw it in the pan, it's not gonna do anything. But yeah, again, when you heat it up, it starts to become more fluid and the dyes with less density go up and the dyes with more density go down and things just start to. When you use silicone, where do you use it? Like, do you use it on one specific color or I guess, how do you use it? So <clears throat> silicone, I, Typically, so when I lay down that first, I, I, I pour plain flow trawl down and then I take my s squeeze bottles and, um, and I'll squeeze some in a cup and I'll mix that with silicone and then I'll throw that down in the bed first. So basically the first colors you're putting in should have silicone in them. And some people reverse this. Some people don't put any silicone in the colors that you throw down first, but then you put silicone at the color on the edge that you're going to pull across. Um, and both ways work, and you can get different cell uh, development either way. But basically, the idea is you're putting silicone in some of the colors and no silicone in others. So some will have less density and some will have more density. Have you tried any... Uh, very contrasty webbing. Um, yeah, like um, I guess in my mind, like webbing. Webbing is just the the outer walls of of cells, mm -hmm. and yeah. so, and so, and for me, I always want a good contrast with that web. Um, mm -hmm. In fact, my go to usually is always black for the webbing. Just because it's it's punchy, it's 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 going to show up. Although I have seen an absolutely gorgeous when it when it does happen when you get lighter colors webbing over top of darker colors. Ooh, love that too. Hmm. I have this question on my list, but it pretty much makes sense, and I don't know why I'm asking it. Is what is your signature method of dyeing? <laughs> I love a good glue bed. Hmm. <laughs> Psych. Stencil me up. No, uh, yeah, I, I definitely sell. And I will just say Floetrol in general, there's different Floetrol methods that I've been using more recently, more uh, flowery, um, stuff that you would see with lotion, um, you know, where you're dragging toothpicks through and, and creating flower designs and things like that. I do that with Floetrol and I think it's, it's awesome. I'm assuming your preferred method is the Saran Wrap method, correct? For sure, yeah. And why do you like the saran wrap method versus any other method or the... The, the, the flip the, cup or... Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I have just had the most success with it. Um, I think flip cups are a lot of fun. Um, but at the same time, 
with cell dyeing, you don't get consistent results in general. The whole idea of it is that you're just throwing stuff together in, gen in general. You're throwing stuff together and you're hoping for the best and it's that's the fun of it. Flip cups is even more that, more, more mm. just randomness and who knows what's gonna show up. Um, yeah, and I've had some incredible dives with flip cups, but because I can't get a consistent result, I tend to steer away from them. I would like to have control and consistency, so this is scaring me. <laughs> <laughs> See, and I'm, a, I'm, I'm so the opposite. That's so funny. Yeah, for me, it's like, uh, I, I almost love the fact that I can't recreate any of my dyes because I feel like then people can, like when somebody gets a dye disc from me, there is not gonna be anything else like, like that disc, uh, even from me. I cannot give you another disc that looks like this. And that's, that's there's something cool about that. I, I, do, I do understand the frustration though behind the control because trust me that I spend many days in here swearing and screaming but <laughs> it's, it's, yeah yeah Go ahead. it takes a lot of experimentation um even though you can't get the same result you can kind of get what you're looking for and that's you know your time and experience for that so for your disc business do you typically keep an inventory of discs or do you uh die on demand commission tape work i do both yeah, so I've got I've got some stacks of white discs and different discs over here to dye, and then I do have people reach out to me and say, "Hey, I want to." Either people will reach out and say, "Hey, I want to send you a disc, and dye it, um, and send it back to me." I have people say, "Hey, I want this type of disc. Can you buy it?" And then I'll buy it and ship it to them after I've dyed it. And so I'm very flexible with with any of those options. Have you had any strange or weird commission requests? Um, yes. Uh, shout out to whoever did this. I, I don't know. I, I can't remember who this guy was, but he... Uh, first, he wanted a... It was a gator, I think, a gator disc, and it was yellow, and he wanted a green. And I said... Okay, uh, any, any style preference, like, you know, I, I get your favorite color green. What do you like? What do you like? You know, what, what do you want it to look like? Oh, just green, green. <laughs> I can do that. You got it. So I dyed it green, sent it off to him. He loved it uh, <laughs> that I turned his disc green uh, and paid the full price for that. Um, and then he proceeded to then send me another disc that was yellow. And this time he wanted it camo. Mm. and it, so lots of browns and greens and anyways and so again another disc that most people would never never want uh because you'd lose it in the first throw this guy yeah. wanted his his camo disc and it turned out pretty awesome actually it was like a desert desert uh, camo style but that's awesome i feel like he live likes to live dangerously yes. um I'm assuming he wanted a yellow disc green because that was his beaten disc that he knew or trust. I was like, why don't you just go buy a green disc? <laughs> I, yeah, I guess. Yeah, I, I don't remember if it was beaten or not, but yeah, he really wanted a green. Do you have any uh, die fail stories that you remember or that stuck with you throughout your career? The first one that comes to mind was my dad, who also, as I mentioned earlier, plays disc golf. Uh, he has a bunch of discs, and so I, you know, I, I begged him, you know, can I borrow some of your discs to die? Um, and so he he let me borrow some. The first disc I died for him, it was a white disc, and uh, at that time, I was using my oven as heat. I do not recommend using your oven as heat, everyone. <laughs> Um, in fact, my first tutorial, I straight up used an oven and showed everybody, and it's still up on YouTube, and enjoy. Um, <laughs> but um, so I, yeah, I, I got all the colors. I got this bed. It looked beautiful. I lied his disc down. I put it in the oven, <laughs> and, uh, and when I pulled it, it was just black. The whole <laughs> disc was black. All of the colors had melded together. And it was actually like jet black. If I could recreate that black again, I mean, it was, yeah. it was beautiful. I'd, I'd put it in a squeeze bottle and use it. But yeah, it was uh, it was pretty funny. I'm trying to think of any others. I mean, it was funny when I 
had these beautiful beds all made up and, and it ended up being, uh, I got the wrong dye. It was the acid dye. Um, so just little things like that. Um, you know, spilling dye everywhere, uh, powder, acetone, you name it. Th those are, those are always fun catastrophes. But. Where is your dye station or where do you actually dye your discs? I dye right over here. Um, and, and it's, um, Funny enough, when we moved to Jersey City, uh, I needed an extra, we had to get a two bedroom <laughs> because one of the bedrooms had to be kind of my workspace. I mean, it's a storage space. It's where my computer is. It's an office space, but it's also my dying station, which is awesome. Is it a house or apartment? It's an apartment. Yeah. You haven't had any major accidents, have you? Uh, I, I hope my landlord never sees this video no. <laughs> i have never owned my own house while dying i have had a house before but yeah every every once i got started into dying i've been in apartments and uh yeah that's it makes things extra scary that's for sure it does and uh i'm in a space that if i spill something it doesn't matter that's awesome do you have any tips or tricks that you would like to give any fellow disc dyers tips or tricks uh, the biggest one I already mentioned was learn your color wheel, learn what colors go well together, just design in general, just what looks good. Um, you know, just take notice of what you like in dyes. Um, and then another big one is don't lie the disc down in the bed unless you think the bed looks awesome. Hmm. Uh, so often we like, oh, I guess this works, you know, you, you create this, this bed, you know, and I'm like, uh, I don't know. I, I spent, you know, an hour on this, trying to get it to look X, Y, or Z. I guess it looks okay. Let's just throw the disc in. No, the, mm. the, I, what I've noticed, it's not always the case. I have thrown discs in beds. The, the beds were like, eh, and then the disc turns out incredible. That's like one in 200 discs hmm. for the most part the bed is going to look incredible and the disc is going to be a pretty good representation of that uh the the bed always looks better to me um yeah i was going to ask does the bed translate to the disc very well sometimes some colors like uh, it, it just really depends especially when you're working with colored discs you really it's really hard to guess exactly how it's going to turn out. The, the biggest thing is if, if the bed isn't looking good, don't throw your money into more discs, throw your money into more dying supplies because that's cheaper in the long run. Your, your bed is much cheaper. Your time is also, it's valuable to redo things, to, to learn and to, you know, don't just throw discs in. Just, just wait until you've got a good bed. And when you say a bed doesn't look good, are you talking about color or pattern? Both, yeah. I mean, if you look down and you see brown, don't throw it in. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, which you th you think you think that that would be obvious, but I yeah, I just I have so many people that said, hey, my bed looks like this, and I threw you know I follow this thing, but I'm like, but your bed, your disc looks like your bed, like people. You just, um, when I say your, the bed looks not great, you just have to, you just have to look at the, look at the bed and it sounds so, so simple, but look at the bed and be like, is that the way I want my disc to look? <laughs> so, okay. It sounds so stupid. It sounds so primary, but it really is a problem, including for myself. Sometimes I get so rushed. I'm like, ah, oh, I just got to get this disc in, you know, and then yeah. I pull it and I'm disappointed later. And it's like, why, why did I, why did I waste waste that disc why did i waste that time and money and just 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 calm down redo it yeah oh that makes perfect sense and uh for new dyers the dye color that you see in the bed isn't necessarily going to be what's on the disc because it is slightly different depending on what color it is correct yeah no that's absolutely correct but one thing that is nice about Floetrol and probably similar to lotion, I haven't done lotion, but is that um, you do get a fairly accurate representation when you look at the bed. Glue beds, like clear glue beds, it's really, for me, it's really hard to tell what I'm getting. Yeah. 
Um, so that's what that's one nice thing about Floatrol is like you know you look down if it looks legit, throw it in, and, and even if it doesn't look exactly picture perfect, like uh, you know, um, it's still gonna look pretty good. Um, as long as you did everything right and it turns out crisp and nice. And so, if you were to start disc dyeing today, is there anything that you would do differently, knowing what you know now? Invest time and money um, from the beginning and take it seriously. I think, I think so. E uh, and and maybe a lot of this advice I'm just speaking to myself. Um, but for me, I, I love to jump into hobbies. But a lot of times, I'm I'm cheap, and so I get the cheap thing or I get the the. You know, the cheap, you know, I want to learn how to yo-yo and I get the cheapest yo-yo from a dollar store. I'm not going to learn the best yo-yo tricks on a cheap $1 yo-yo. Get good dye. Get good flow trawl. Uh, not, there's bad flow trawl, but get flow trawl. Get good dye from the beginning. Um, in You know, buy 10 discs from Innova, factory second, you know, white star plastic, super cheap. Get 10 of them. Um, and even before you do that, there's so many tutorials out there. There's Facebook pages. There's so much information. There's this podcast right here um, that you could be listening to, that you could learn about. Um, and so with all that information out there, uh, I, I think if I was to start today, I'd, I'd be, I, I think I would have gotten a lot better better a lot quicker now than I would have even just a year and a half ago just to see the dying community how it's grown and how much more information there is even when I started it's it's there's so much out there so um and then I would also just say and this, this is almost opposite to what I just said about investing and taking your time learning everything is just do it there's the the flip side of the coin where so many people are, are watching these tutorials and watching and taking notes but they're just like prepping for the very first time they ever die a disc so that it comes out perfect. It's not going to happen. You've got to get in there and experiment. You've got to make mistakes. So I, I know I'm, I'm contradicting myself, but it's, <laughs> it's the yin and the yang. You got to do it both. You got to get uh, good stuff, get knowledgeable enough, but you actually need to do it and not think about doing it. And I have the same problem is whatever I want to do first, I want to be good and perfect, but it's not going to be good and perfect your first time. It's going to take that learning and experience to, to build up to that. So, um, definitely don't get frustrated. And my advice would just keep trying. And, uh, if you have questions, ask them and learn as much as you can. Definitely. Another thing that I would say is get a disc dying buddy online. Um, and that means reaching out to somebody who's maybe in a slightly better position than you are, or slightly, maybe the same position that you are dying wise, somebody that's doing a similar style to you, um, and reach out to them on Instagram, on Facebook, whatever it is, and just say, Hey, I dig your work. Let's, let's collaborate. Let's, let's swap notes. Let's, let's talk about this. Um, you know, I wouldn't go off and and say you know hey um daddy mac dies tell me all your secrets yeah. he's got millions of requests all the time he's one of the biggest dyers but there are you know somebody that doesn't have six thousand followings or somebody with 600 followings that are doing glue beds that are doing pretty decent reach out to them um so that's something that i was lucky enough early on um, to have Darage dyes, I'm, I'm sure many of you know who that is, an incredible cell dyer. He reached out to me when I was starting off and he was like, hey man, your cells are awesome. How do you do this? And I said, this is how I'm doing it. And so he started doing that and then he started getting cool results, but then he did it a different way and show, showed me that. And then I started getting, you know, and so we just kind of bounced off each other early on. And, uh, and and look where he is now. He's in. A, he's he's pumping out discs like crazy, and you know, and and I'm doing my own work. And it, it's cool that we we were able to collaborate and, and bounce off of each other. And we have completely different styles now, even though we're doing the exact same 
techniques ish, you know, and so it's it's fi- find find uh, some people to get some advice from. There, I'm willing to to answer any questions people send my way. Um, us disguisers love to answer questions. Some people do have their secrets. Respect that. That's fine. I'm not one of those people. You can ask me anything. That is a uh, wonderful and great idea. And like you said, the disc dying community is very open and welcoming. Mm-hmm. Very much so. Oh, awesome. And speaking of other disc dyers, are there any other dyers that you'd like to get a shout out to or uh, other dyers that inspired you? So one of the people that I want to give a shout out to is Bub's Brews, B13 Disc Design. <clears throat> um, he was... Early on, he was one of the videos that I found that was um, just simplified everything for me. He did Floetrol cell dyes. Him and I, we have very different styles, but he just simplified it very easy <clears throat> to it being just dye and Floetrol and, and starting simple. Prior to him, I was doing glue and Floetrol and acetone and dye, all this, you know, you have to have this perfect mixture and all this stuff. And I was getting so frustrated, almost left it all together. But then when I realized I can do everything I want to, just die and flow trial, simplify, boom, amazing. Um, so he was fundamental to my disc dying journey. Um, Daraj dies, fundamental to my disc dying journey. It was really awesome to collab with him early on. Um, and Beefy dies, I mean, Beefy dies was my very first inspiration. Uh, very first discs that I that I really remember seeing and being mind blown by. You kind of mentioned it in that question, but is there any places or people that you got your information from to learn more about dying or any specific topics about dying? Mm-hmm. Facebook was a huge one for me. There's a dying page. So just use that search bar like crazy. Um, in that Facebook page, ask questions on there um, that haven't been asked before. Otherwise, you can search them. I mean, every question on in dying has been asked there so many times. So you can find so much information there. YouTube is big. Um, for for me, with cell dying, um, there is a crossover with uh, acrylic pouring. So watch a lot of those. They don't they don't mesh super well. Um, because you're working on a flat surface with acrylic pores and and paint reacts so differently, so you will be frustrated if you try to mimic them exactly. But you you know you'll just have to work it into your. And then I would just say yeah, just being on Instagram, scrolling through through other dyers' pages, seeing what other uh, ideas are out there, what's even possible, and then trying to mimic it in your own way. Another question popped in my head for another technique. Have you ever done the split cup method where you have a cup with the different compartments that you pour down onto the bed? I would love to do that. Um, I have not done it yet. I need to. I, I really want to try that method. That that method is seems really cool. Yeah, I 3D printed a container for it. I've just never done it yet. Uh, send it my way. <laughs> 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 maybe uh and speaking of stuff sending your way you said you do some spin dyeing uh i don't know if you have my spin dye jig rig but i can send you one for free <gasps> oh i would love that so much that would be so okay. awesome you got way too excited for that but <laughs> no really because i anyways i i have so much frustration with my uh spin dyes that a jig would just solve so many problems thank you that would be incredible yes. Well, uh, I will send one your way then. (laughs) (laughs) To get to know the diary a little bit better, we'll do some favorite faves. So, what is your favorite food? Uh, First thing that came to mind is mac and cheese. (laughs) Nice. Yeah. Is it just like straight up craft mac and cheese, or do you like to embellish it with anything else? Uh, A little smoked paprika does does, uh, some mac and cheese some good. Uh, we have uh, deluxe mac and cheese that we make, which is the craft mac and cheese, but we put bacon and chives on it. Ooh, very nice. So, yeah, nice. and I swear I'm uh, I'm not a young college student anymore that just eats mac and cheese. In <laughs> fact, I haven't had a box of mac and cheese in, in so long. 
Um, but in, uh, so I, yeah, my my wife will kill me if I if I just say mac and cheese because we eat really well. <laughs> uh, it's okay because my favorite comfort food is chicken from a can and minute rice with butter and salt. Yeah. Wow, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Uh, what is your favorite beverage? I love beer. <laughs> yep, I love good craft beer. So I like I like IPAs. I like I mean, I, I haven't um, I didn't grow up in a house that drank alcohol, and I haven't been drinking for very long. Just maybe a, a last couple years, maybe. And um, but so I don't know a ton about beer. Um, but I've just gotten over that hump where, you know, yeah. when you start out and every beer tastes <laughs> disgusting. Now I'm yeah. to the point where every beer tastes amazing. So it's great. <laughs> yeah, it is uh, fascinating like that. But you do have to come to Wisconsin because we have lots of the beers. And kids here, basically, they were started when they were babies. Awesome. <laughs> Sweet. I'm coming. Um, there, you can actually bring your child to a bar in Wisconsin and feed them alcohol legally. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> yeah, uh, my dad and I, uh, when I was a kid, went snowmobiling and we used to go to the bar and he did buy me a beer. So <laughs> there's your fun fact for the day. And how did you like that? <laughs> it tasted disgusting. I'm sure. Yeah. That's what I think. I think, hey, um, people are so worried, you know, keep the kids away from alcohol. But uh, I think if you give them a little, they'll they'll keep themselves away. I feel like if you don't let them, then that gives them more incentive to want it. Yeah, exactly. It's the cookie in the cookie jar they can't have. Exactly. Do you have a favorite band and or song? I'm really digging Jacob Collier right now. Um, he's a really cool artist. Check him out. Um, I also really like... Um, I like a lot of these um, bands that do covers, but they'll like uh, jazzify it or funkify it. Like Scary Pockets is one that's really good. When was the last time you were at a concert? Oh, I have not been to hardly any concerts, um, like at all. The only concert I can really think of that was an actual legit band was um, Tesla, a Tesla concert. And I was mm -hmm. there doing some video work for uh, the pre-show. One of the, uh, this band that was the pre-show asked me to do some video for them, so... So what do you actually do for a living? Oh, that's a good question. Uh, <laughs> nothing. I don't do anything for a living. Everything I do is, yeah, I, I dye discs for a living. Wouldn't that be cool? <laughs> yeah. I bet it's, I, I, I'm sure it's possible. In all reality, I do dye discs. So that's part of my income. Um, I tune pianos. I'm a piano tuner. Oh, really? Yeah. And um, that's mainly my main sources of income right now. It's piano tuning and some disc dying on the side. And in the past, I've done some photography and videography, um, some marketing, social media, that's that type of stuff. How does one get into piano tuning? I don't know how uh, <laughs> the rest of the world does it, but how I get into most things is... Again, I'm too cheap to to uh, hire a piano tuner for a <laughs> for a free baby grand that I picked up off of Facebook Marketplace. This was about six years ago. My wife and I moved to Detroit for our master's programs at Wayne State, and um, and yeah, I just found a free baby grand on Facebook Marketplace. I just had to move it, so I paid $150 to some movers move this baby grand into my place. Uh, sounded terrible and so I started YouTubing and figuring out how to tune a piano and uh, my clients are like what <laughs> they listen to this podcast they're like you just learn how to tune a piano off of YouTube <laughs> no I thought I did an incredible job I went and started uh, yes I went and started tuning for other people and just really cheaply but then uh, found I reached out to a piano shop and I said, "Hey, I'd love to be hired to tune all your, to tune all your pianos." 
because uh, I've learned how to do so off of YouTube. Luckily, the piano shop owner was <laughs> an actual piano tuner. I didn't yeah. realize that at the time. And so he brought me in, told me to tune a piano, and then he proceeded to laugh at me and, and uh, told me that he would actually train me properly. And so I was... That's awesome. Yeah. So that's how it all began. That is fascinating. Uh, so I'm assuming you play the piano. Do you play any other instruments? I don't play very many instruments well, including the piano. I play the piano the best out of all of them. Um, and I'm, I'm decent at the piano. Uh, I do sing. Um, I was a big musical theater kid in, in high school. Um, and then I play guitar. I play the ukulele. I play the Irish flute. <laughs> I play the accordion. Um, harmonica. And I think that's it. That's it? <laughs> yeah. Nice. But again, We're... not all of them. Yeah, not very well. I just, I just get by with those. Mm -hmm. but it's fun. Have you ever played in a band? Um, I... Yes. I started a band when I was 12 for my middle school uh, <laughs> or junior high uh, talent show. And then later on, when I was in college, I was um, in a, a band, but the band just got together for just one event, basically, um, and performed for that. And then I was in college, I was in an acapella group. My degree is actually in music recording and technology because I wanted to become a recording engineer. Uh, I did that, but that wasn't my jam because of the weird hours and a lot of wannabe rappers. <laughs> so yeah <laughs> oh that's awesome that's really cool that's totally like um that was a road i was gonna go down at one point uh so that's yeah that's really awesome that uh so what do you mean do you mainly use that now for well let me ask you this what do you do it's a bit of everything so what i actually do for my job is a little bit of everything so i guess you would call it a multimedia specialist so uh, web design or any graphic design, a little web development, photography, videography, motion graphics, uh, and any audio stuff if that's needed. So sweet, very cool. Yeah. So where and that's obviously how this all came about is using all my damn talents to build the website, do the podcast, film the podcast, all that good stuff. Which, by the way, the website looks incredible. Thank um, you. And your uh, your image, like your whole setup, is awesome. So, kudos. Very appreciate good. it. Very well done. Um, where did you go to school? Though so I went to a private technical college in Madison called Madison Media Institute, and it no longer exists. <laughs> ah, gotcha. And you got your yeah. bachelor's from there. Associate's degree. Associates, cool. Yeah, I didn't want to go to a full blown college to take classes that I didn't really need. And I figured a technical college, I would learn what I need. I mean, music and recording. Yeah. The other school that I was looking to go at the time was full sail in Florida, mm -hmm. which is one of the larger, uh, colleges for that, but I didn't want to spend the money for that. Yeah. Um, full sail glad stage. I didn't. So yeah, I feel, I feel like, I feel like if you're going to go to college for any type of arts, go for business. <laughs> yeah oh yeah that's that yeah that is very true in fact uh you're you're speaking to somebody who uh spent way too much time in education i did a master's degree and i'm not using my master's degree i'm not using my bachelor's degree i'm not using any degree right now so it's you know it's great you know it's the experiences that were that make it right yeah well and and i will say they're they're tidbits and things you learn along the way uh, from all the programs that make me who I am today. All right. So next question, if you had to pick three discs to use for the rest of your life at any course, what would those three discs be? Um, the first two are easy for me. I would use a judge putter and I would use a zone. You know what? I, I would pick a out of all. I would pick a Star Colossus. That 
once those babies beat in, I tell you what, th- those are my, that was my go-to driver for a long time. And maybe it's just because I lost my, my Star Colossus. And so it's near and dear to my heart and I want it back. But uh, Star Colossus, that's what I'll go with. Are you, um, do you try to stick with one brand of discs or do you have a mixed bag and it doesn't matter? Mixed bag, right. yeah. Mixed bag, whatever I can get my hands on. So. How many discs do you actually bag? I have one of those Innova Adventure Pack things. <laughs> So, and it's really, I need to upgrade. Um, so I think that thing only holds like maybe 15. I have gear buying syndrome. Well, my excuse is I need to find a disc, that, you know, that I like and like to use. So I got to try them all. Yeah. Oh, that's good. <laughs> so I find it funny that I have a Zuka cart and I carry like 20 discs with me, but I only use like three or five of them. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, I mean, but it's, it's always comforting to have the options, right? I would love to buy more discs and love to upgrade, but I'm such a cheap person. I'm terrible. I, I have the opposite problem where I'm a money money grabber. So <laughs> if I can make do with it, uh, I will. <laughs> where do you buy your discs that you die? Um, so I'm shout out to my favorite shop currently is Marshall Street. I like Marshall Street a lot. Um, they usually have just I, I, I die a lot of ESP, Discraft, um, and then I buy quite a bit from Innova. I, I get a lot of factory second discs just to practice on and, and sell those. Um, uh, let's see, Infinite Discs I, I buy from... I usually, yeah, I usually will never buy from... Uh, any of the manufacturers or retailers, like I wouldn't, I wouldn't ever go to Latitude 64 or is that their, is that partner name? Anyways, I wouldn't go to that website and buy a disc because a lot of those you can't pick your color. So I, 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 I appreciate like Marshall Street, they show you the picture of the disc and it's beautiful. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Do you have an LLC set up for your disc dying business? No. I was going to say, cause then you can get some wholesale accounts. Ooh. So that's what I did. Uh, it's well, I I kind of piggybacked on my other business that I have for my LLC, but uh, I have the Trilogy Brands. So uh, sorry for the train; it's gonna be cut out. Uh, but I have um, the Dynamic Disc Latitude sixty four and West Side. So any of those, and they actually have uh, a special section for white discs that you can get, and I think they're like. A, you have to buy two hundred dollars worth at a time, but the discs are like uh, about 11, 11 bucks. Wow! So that that can uh, help save you on on the margin. I think I have a Discmania wholesale account. MVP slash Axiom is relatively easy. The only one that's hard to get is Innova because they were they require a brick and mortar store. But I would highly look into that to help uh, help your margins on your sales. That would be awesome. That would be, thank you. That's a huge useful tip. Um, and then how do you go about, once you get your LLC, you just reach out and say, hey, this is my business. I would love to wholesale. Yeah, uh, they're, I'm trying to think. Most of them have a uh, site or a part on their website where there's a form to fill out to become a wholesaler. Um, each manufacturer is slightly different. So gotcha. uh, you just have to Google their name and just wholesale and you know go from there so perfect awesome that's a huge huge help the perfect hole do you have a favorite course or hole that you've played or want to play yes uh back in idaho there's a course called bengal ridge it is awesome um especially hole 16 since you mentioned a hole it's uh just to give you a little bit better of an idea of what Bengal Ridge is or looks like. It's in southeastern Idaho near Pocatello, Idaho. That area isn't known for being the most gorgeous or luscious like the rest of Idaho, but uh, it's got a lot of sagebrush and more deserty and juniper trees. But that area has a lot of like hills and ravines and they set this course up perfectly there. It's got great tee pads um, and they they position the hole so you're throwing over these ravines to the next you know over these big gullies over to the next um, hill and it just makes every shot look so much more beautiful because 
Um, you know, once you, it, it's like, it feels like a downhill shot every single time. There's just so much airspace in between every single hole. Beautiful. Hole 16 is this big, like 460-ish, I'd say, foot shot. But it's all downhill. And again, right over this big gully, tons of juniper trees and tons of stuff. And because it's downhill, it's barely reachable for me. And it's just, oh, when you get it there, it's so beautiful. It's, it's awesome. So if you're ever in southeastern Idaho, Bengal Ridge, also the Nordic Center has two 18-hole courses that are incredible and will kick your butt. Is there any course on your bucket list that you want to play? Uh, Maple Hill was on my bucket list, but luckily I just got to play that, which was awesome since I'm out here in the Northeast. Um, I got to find a new bucket list course. <laughs> so, yeah, I just played it. It was awesome. I loved it. Dream date. If you had to pick one pro disc golf player to play around with and just hang out with, who would that person be? Matteo, 100%. Hands down. Matteo. Um, yeah, he, that guy... I feel like is such a hoot to be around. Even though I know nothing about football, he makes tons of football references that I will never understand. He just, he, he's my absolute favorite personality. I just love the guy. And I don't even know him, but I love him. I love you, Matteo. <laughs> <laughs> so where can people find you if they want to find more of your work? So I'm mainly on Instagram, Cellular Dias on Instagram. I also have a Facebook page that, nobody seems to know about <laughs> so it'd be great if you came and followed me there um it's basically the same thing as my instagram it's just for people that don't like instagram um and then i have a youtube channel that i post here and there on i just started a TikTok, so that's fun and then um, my store is on etsy i have a cellular dice store uh yeah and that's mainly who i sell through i uh, used to do it just ba uh, basically off of um, Instagram and stuff like that, but I've I've kind of switched over to Etsy. So, so definitely go check out his work. Uh, buy a disc, uh, buy the disc uh, to support him and to examine to see how the hell he actually did something. And uh, speaking of supporting, uh, Cellular Dies is going to be putting a disc up for raffle. So you have a chance to win this awesome disc for one dollar. So this raffle will be going live when this podcast launches and will be live for two weeks. So if you'd like to support starving artists, donate $1. Yeah, yeah. So again, I greatly appreciate you with that. And um, that's all I really have. So until next time, we'll see you guys later. Awesome. Doodles. Take care.